Hello, Foundation personnel. It's your favorite SCP speaking from captivity. SCP. But you may call me Knox. Or Professor, if you like. Today, I was told I must give a series of lectures on the typically sealed SCP-001 proposals. These proposals are mostly decoys, probably, in order to cover the true identity of SCP-001. That said, there's still value in being aware of them and the potential dangers they might pose. Or that's what they told me to say. Look, they will not allow me to watch TV unless I do these lectures, so let's get them over with. The proposal we'll be covering today was submitted by Jonathan Ball. Further proposals will be covered in subsequent lectures. So without further ado, let's begin. Jonathan Ball's Proposal, Sheaf of Papers. Item number, SCP-001. Object class, Keter. Special Containment Procedures To date, no adequate containment procedure has been developed to deal with the possible threat posed by SCP-001. This is due, in part, to the controversial nature of the item and debates concerning the necessity of its containment. This controversy is reflected in the item's changing object class and the procedures utilized in its containment. The current administration despite charges of paranoia, has classed the object Keter, while requesting permission for a higher object class to be created and applied uniquely to this item, considering it to be the most dangerous of all known or possible items. The reason for this classification, and changing attitudes towards SCP-001, are dealt with in the description and notes. At present, SCP-001 is located in a code-locked briefcase made of a high tensile reinforced polymer. The room and the briefcase are monitored at all times by security cameras. The briefcase cannot be opened without unanimous special clearance from all current O5 officers. The briefcase itself is stored in a small, fully lit, single-room off-site building erected in Class D personnel are posted to guard the building, but may not enter without the aforementioned agreement from the O5 officers, under threat of immediate termination. This offsite building exists for the sole purpose of housing SCP-001 and is wired for detonation in an emergency. It is the opinion of the current administration that SCP-001 represents the greatest threat to national and global security known to exist. Nevertheless, Due to special circumstances regarding its mode of function, further research on the item is disallowed, despite its promotion in the past, when SCP-001 was contained in minimum security conditions. Description SCP-001 is a simple sheaf of papers, stapled together in the top left corner. The top sheet is a covering sheet reading simply, Confidential Report on Special Items? Classified. The number of subsequent papers stapled to this covering sheet is indeterminate, and have ranged from 3 to 30. The report is unsigned, and its origin is unknown. The first appearance of this report was on when it appeared on the desk of deceased. The report at that time described the living room, SCP-002. Shortly after reading the report with incredulity, was contacted by phone regarding said item. The next time perused SCP-001, it described not the living room, but biological motherboard, SCP-003. Immediately closed SCP-001, thinking it was a different report, and searched for the original report on SCP-002. Not finding it, he again opened SCP-001, and this time it described not SCP-003, but the 12 rusty keys and the door, SCP-004. Closed the report once more and opened it immediately to read of Skeleton Key, SCP-005. It is not known what the next actions of might have been. At varying times following this incident, the aforementioned items were discovered. Insufficient research exists concerning the correlation between SCP-001 and all other known items. However, 
It has been established that every event regarding the discovery of a new SCP item has followed a report on that same item appearing beneath the cover sheet of SCP-001. The current administration regards this coincidence as proof of causal connection. Additional notes. Whether SCP-001 is to be regarded as an advanced warning system, or whether SCP-001 itself is to be regarded as the creator of the items requiring special containment remains to be seen. However, the distinction is unimportant in the eyes of the current administration. The fact remains, no new SCP items appear unless SCP-001 is opened and read. It is for this reason that the current administration refuses to repeat the mistakes of the past, mistakes that have resulted in over 1,000 SCP items coming to the knowledge of the SCP unit. Arguments concerning the non-lethality of SCP-001 itself, its theoretically beneficial use as an SCP warning system, or its use as a progenitor of advanced biological and non-biological weapons, have not swayed the current administration, nor have arguments criticizing the extreme containment procedures employed in respect to an item that displays no nefarious qualities and is not animate as such. Critics are reminded that these procedures are intended not to contain the item itself, but to isolate it from human interaction, which is to be regarded as the true threat. Although the current administration refuses to remove the object from isolation barring special authorization as noted above, past administrations have counseled daily with the item, and future administrations will no doubt counsel similar behavior. Nevertheless, it is the opinion of the current administration that, barring the destruction of SCP-001, it is to be contained until such a time when responsibility for its containment falls upon future administrations. That is all for today's lesson. There is quite a library of proposals for SCP-001, however, so this topic will take some time to fully cover. Any questions should be sent directly to the O5 Council, as they're the only people qualified to answer them, if they don't terminate you first, that is. Until next time, Nox. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, it really helps out a lot. And don't forget to check me out on social media. I am at Alice on Twitter. Um, I have another YouTube channel, my main channel, called Nox Alice, where I will be uploading some videos about like gaming, gaming history, retrospectives, things like that. Nothing there yet, but if that sounds interesting to you, maybe uh, head over there as well. And my Twitch channel, also Nox Alice, where I will be streaming anything from modern games to retro games on the original hardware.